Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Today, I wanna go over something that I say all the time, and you've probably heard me say, this is a profit game, not a sales game. And I take a lot of crap from people because they're always like, no, Tammy, this is a sales thing. We gotta get as many sales as we can. I'm not gonna deny that you need sales. Without sales, you do not have profit. But I think what a lot of people forget is they do everything under the sun in order to drive their sales, but they spend very little time actually working on the profit within their business. And there's a couple different ways that you can do profit. You can sell one thing and make $100 in profit, or you can sell 100 things and make $100 in profit. It's just about how much you can turn or do that product or service. I will tell you, there's only so much time in a day. And there are some businesses that are not cut out to do it for the cheapest way possible and to make a lot of profit by doing it over and over and over and over. Now, there are some big box retailers that work on lowering their prices because they know they can get the volume. Think Walmart, think Costco, Home Depot to a degree. They run lower margins so that they can sell it a lot of times and they sell it multiple times. But the reality is that only works on certain things that you have a very high demand on and you can produce the product in order for it to be able to do it that fast. But if you have a service-based business, for example, maybe you're a landscaper, you groom dogs, electrician, whatever the case may be, I'm telling you, there's only so many hours in the day. So unless you plan to have a entire fleet of people working for dirt cheap, you're not going to be able to create the profit because you're not going to be able to get the turns, which is how often you're able to do it in order to make that profit. You have to find a way to create the sweet spot for your profit. And then how can you continue to drive the sales? But what happens is a lot of times is we get maxed out. We can't do much more business. So we automatically think, oh, I've got to hire someone. I've got to bring someone else aboard. And this is going to all of a sudden lead me to more profits. No, most of the time it's going to lead you to more sales. Yes. And it's going to give you a false impression. You're doing a much better job at your business. But in many cases, you actually make less money. I'm actually working on a video for the YouTube channel right now that I'm going to be posting hopefully here in the next few days that'll go over a couple of examples with this. The main thing that I need everybody to understand is you can have a million dollars in sales and make a hundred thousand dollars, or you can have half a million dollars in sales and make a hundred thousand dollars. It really just depends upon the numbers. This is one of the reasons why I'm always talking about the fact that you need to know your numbers because a lot of times what happens is we focus all this energy into growing those sales, but like I said earlier, we spend very little time on how we can make it more profitable. Now, part of it's going to be the way that we price. Absolutely, a lot of people out there are under price, but they might feel that that's the right price for their business. And if they're, you've done all the work and you just know that, hey, this is my sweet spot, this is exactly where I need to be priced at, then in order for you to make more profit, you're going to have to do a couple things. One is make sure you're lean and mean on all of your costs as well as your expenses. That's the first place to start. The second thing is, yes, you're going to have to find a way to how do you create more sales to create more profit. But the first thing you can do is step back and see how much money you're leaving on the table. For many people, if you just want to make a little bit more money, it's about tweaking that price. Because in many cases, if you were to raise your price, even just $5 on a service, that's going to lead to $5 more profit every time that you do it. And the odds of you losing somebody over that $5 is very small. Uh, some businesses, it might be a little bit more dangerous for than others. And I also understand that on some products, if you're only selling it for $5, you're not going to double it to 10. But that $1 extra is probably going to make a huge difference. Uh, Now, I don't want you overpricing yourself because that is one of the things that I get a little worried about sometimes when people watch the videos that I create and talk about this. They raise their prices way too high. Um, you know, the main thing is I want you to be aware of your price so that you can maximize the profits, not necessarily that you have to wait over price yourself to where you are no longer able to do business. Sometimes if you lose everybody, it's for one of two reasons, either you way overpriced or B, you were only getting 
the low end people in the first place. And in which case your price still may be right. It's about now, are you targeting the right person who will be willing to pay that price? For example, if before all your marketing was cheap, 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 and we can beat everybody's price and we're the lowest price and everything else, of course, you're going to attract those people. But what you want to do is you want to be talking about the benefits of them using you and how you're going to solve those pain points. So you really might have more of a marketing issue, not so much that you're not getting in front of enough eyeballs, you're just not getting in front of the right eyeballs. At the end of the day, you have to be able to make the money because if you you do more in sales, if you double your sales from $500 to $1,000, but you don't make any more profit, all you've done in a lot of cases is created more work for yourself. And I've watched a lot of businesses where they, they hire somebody, yes, they can get more jobs, they can double their number of jobs, but when you get to the bottom line numbers, they're not really making that much more money, in which case they're giving up all of the profit they had before, now they're just turning around and giving it to an employee wage side, or they go out and they hire the person, which probably would have been okay, but then they ran up their expenses, they went out and bought all this other equipment and tools and a vehicle and everything else that they probably did not need right away, and then they blew through all that profit that they had. It's really, really important that every decision that you make in your business, that it's a calculated decision, that you really step back and you ask yourself, is this going to lead to more sales? But more importantly, is it going to lead to more profit? Now, there are times in your business that you're going to sacrifice profit in order to grow the business. I totally get that. And you might say, hey, for the next six months, I'm going to be operating at a loss because I know I have to go out and get X, Y, and Z in order for me to be able to grow my business. That's a calculated decision. It's a decision made on purpose. But what I'm talking about is when there is no calculated decision behind it. It's just willy-nilly making up a decision that you're going to change your price or you're going to hire someone or you're going to do something. You're going to spend all this money on advertising, whatever the case may be, and you're going to blow through the profits, but there was no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just asking you guys that when I say it's a profit game, not a sales game, I want you to make sure that you have a reason for every decision that you make. That if you are going to chase sales, it's because you know you're going to get a certain amount of profit out of it. At the end of the day, there are some very big businesses and there's a lot, many, many, many little businesses that they will chase sales. And on the outside, they look like they're doing fantastic because they just have sales over sales after sales, but they end up closing the doors. Yes, even big retailers. You can do billions of dollars, millions of dollars, hundreds of dollars, it doesn't matter, and still go out of business because at the end of the day, you have to have money to pay the bills and to pay the people that are working for you and for the owner to make some money. So it doesn't matter how many sales you have if you're not profitable. And I I know I'm kind of repeating this over and over. It's just, I really need you guys to understand how important your profit is when you're doing everything that you do. And if you are gonna go on the lower end of profits, then just know that you're gonna have to sell more in order to get the profit dollars, okay? Maybe you're not gonna get the profit percentage, but to get the profit dollars that you want, you're going to have to sell it over and over and over, whether that's a service or a product, but it's way easier to do that with a product than it is a service because a service-based business needs you. Now, there are some exceptions to that, which is for the online business people that, you know, they spend all the time up front creating a course or creating something, and then that thing can sell over and over without any more of their work or assistance or labor hours attached to it. That's different. Okay, but I'm talking about the service-based businesses where you go to somebody's home or they bring it to you and you then fix something, create something, clean something, change something. But when you physically have to do it over and over and over, it's very difficult to just chase sales and not make sure that you've got the right profit because it's going to be very difficult for you to make money because there's only so many hours in the day. Please understand, there are millionaires out there that have service-based businesses and they have these types of businesses and they have lots of people that work for them and they've been able to make them very profitable. But if you ask every single one of them what was the turning point in their business, they're gonna tell you it was when they really started paying attention to the numbers, that they really understood that for every person that they hired, they knew exactly what they were going to be making in profit afterwards, that every dime that they spent in their business, they knew where that money was going. I have met people that do millions of dollars and they make no money. I've met people that do hundreds of dollars and they make decent money. It's it's pretty amazing. It's all about that bottom line. 
All right, I'm going to stop preaching on this, but I really wanted to make sure that you understood that when I say it's a profit game, not a sales game, that you understand I'm not discouraging you from chasing sales. I'm just saying chase sales with purpose and to make sure that any sales that you're chasing come with some profit. And if they don't have profit, that there is a short-term plan on how long you're going to do it because you're really trying to gain customers to get them into your ecosystem. So this way you can cultivate them and get to the point where they are making profit. At the end of the day, the only way that your business is going to survive is for it to be profitable. And by the way, if you want to learn more about your business numbers and how to look at them and how to understand them, don't forget the Know Your Business Numbers course, where I walk you through how to understand your profit and loss, and we dive in more into your pricing and everything else, so this way you can use the numbers of your business to become more profitable. Now get out there, make some money, and go be profitable.